So winter camping in a small camper trailer, it can just be downright intimidating, but it really doesn't have to be. Today we're gonna share with you the four destinations to keep you the most safe when out in your small camper trailer in these winter conditions. And the best thing is, you don't have to travel far for many of these. Hey guys, my name is Drew. Welcome to Playing With Sticks. This is a channel devoted to helping you get out here in your small camper trailers and just have a more gratifying and simple camping experience. If you're interested in that, subscribe for more of this type of content. But I just wanna start off, guys, and talk about what this episode is not about today. This is not about heading south to warmer weather or renting a cabin or a yurt. All great things to help you know break up the monotony of winter, but this is about helping you take the camping gear you already own, the camper you already own, and this is to help you break down those barriers that are keeping you from getting out here and experiencing this beautiful winter wonderland. All right, ski resorts. So the first one is ski resorts. Think about it, ski resorts, you need to get skiers in and you need to get skiers out. So they have some of the best plow equipment in the nation, or in the world, right? And then ski resorts have people trained in avalanche safety. There are first responders, they have training in trauma care. So if there's somebody in your party who can contact the local ski authorities, they're gonna be able to get out to you quickly and they are trained in finding people. They know how to triangulate a GPS coordinate. They know how to get to you. And if you're traveling on your own, same thing. If you have a satellite communications device and you can quickly contact them, again, they're not more than just a phone call away to be able to help you out. Now, another thing many of you don't think about with ski resorts is that for $20, you can park in their lot and stay the night. That means we have access to the toilets, uh, to warming up inside, but it also gives you access to be the first one on the powder in the morning and the last one off the slopes at night. And then you get to head into your small little teardrop, drink that hot chocolate, and gaze up at the stars while everybody else has to go home and come back the next day. This is a side note for my fellow Alaskans. Sorry, but our resort only allows camping during the summer. I put these videos on to just give an idea for those in North America who do have ski slopes who promote staying during the winter. Alias guy, I hope you see this video and let us camp there. Now, the only downfall of a ski resort, and it's really not a downfall, is that if you want that coffee or your bagel on that last morning of your stay before you head home, if it's a powder day, that whole town may be completely closed. If it's a good ski town, listen to this ski towns, they typically let their employees run out and carve that newly fresh powdered snow. So I say for those of you who have skis, bring them along because if a powder day comes in, you might be wanting to make a phone call to work and saying you need an extra day. In the comment section, I've been having a lot of comments with Jennifer Stewart, so you probably see a lot of her comments. Just recently, she brought this to my mind, and we were talking about boondocking, and she was saying how to avoid the crowds by staying on farmland and people's property. And that started getting me thinking about winter camping, because as my family grows and my responsibilities grow, I'm starting to get a little more conservative with age, and so as I'm going out in the winter, especially by myself, I'm thinking what are the most safest spots to keep me out of a hairy situation, or a situation where I just make my family uncomfortable. Maybe I'm safe, but they don't know it because I'm stuck out there an extra day and I can't communicate. Well, she used pitched.ca as an example. So pitched is a site in Canada where you can pay someone to stay on their property, just like hip camp in North America and all over the world. So next I'm gonna share with you three more safe winter camping destinations. But first I wanna share with you some of the best advice I've received this year, and that's from the sponsor of this video, backcountry.com. And that simple advice is, if you can walk, you can snowshoe. So choosing snowshoes for East, our four-year-old son, was a bit harder. 
Our dilemma was, do you pick a snowshoe, like an aluminum advanced snowshoe that can grow with him as he learns? Or do you choose a beginner snowshoe that's made of composite materials so that it can help him gain confidence quicker? In the end, we went with the entry level snowball snowshoes by Tubbs, and we now 100% know we made the right decision. Look at this little guy's confidence. So here's what we needed, a snowshoe that could tackle powder, ice, and steep terrain. And I have to say, one of my favorite things about Backcountry's gearheads, besides being available 24-7, they actually got us in touch with an avid snowshoer on staff to help us get all set up. We needed bindings that we could easily get in and out of so we could spend more time helping our kids get in their own gear. We opted for aluminum frames with Nitex decking for that weight savings, toe and heel crampons for the ice and hard pack. Come on, we might as well go for the best and throw on side rails for that extra grip as we're lifting the boys off the snow. We made sure our snowshoes came equipped with heel risers to make it easier on us going up steep hills. With Backcountry's huge selection of the best outdoor brands, I easily found a pair that met all my needs, which were the Atlas Montane snowshoes. And May grabbed herself the Wilderness Snowshoes from Tubbs, which both had pretty similar features. We're partnering with Backcountry to encourage you to get outside and find your Backcountry, wherever that may be. Use code PLAYINGWITHSTICKS for 15% off your first purchase at backcountry.com. Thanks Backcountry for sponsoring this video. Hip Camp gives you the opportunity to stay in your own pristine winter spot, but knowing you have the safety of somebody on site. So you have somebody there who's going to plow those roads for you and plow your campsite out for you. If things get a little tough or you weren't prepared right when you're there, you can go over, knock on their door, ask for some food, some water. If you're stuck on the way out, they can plow you out or at least contact somebody who has the resources to do that. And another great thing about these is they're predictable. You can call up the owner and say, hey, what's the conditions like? How's it going to be for this type of car getting in? You can't do that with a regular boondocking site. You might go out to your boondocking site and find the snow is so deep you can't even get in. Or what if you show up and there's somebody in your boondocking site? This way you just kind of know and everything's prepared and ready for you. And that's kind of the last thing, you know more. When you have a site, one of these private ones, you can look at the photos online, you can read the reviews, so you can kind of understand what the person's like, what their property's like, what you're getting yourself into. And that gives you a big peace of mind going out because then you know what to prepare for. Alright, so up here in Alaska, we have very popular backcountry skiing destinations. And you're not going to have that everywhere, so I'm going to use that in a comparison to popular ice fishing destinations. So with backcountry skiing, we typically have people out there, you know, like a park ranger who is digging snow pits, checking avalanche conditions, checking the weather. There is an updated website that is telling you the conditions at all times so you know what's out there. This is very similar to the fishing community. Many of these fishing communities actually have people from game fishing parks, uh, other law enforcement agencies updating the website, but these communities are so active you also have individual users doing the same thing. And so this lets you know how much snow just got dumped in there. It lets you know, can you drive in certain roads? But what I really think is best about these fishing holes is that the folks who do ice fishing, these guys are more prepared than anybody I know. You know, if you look at me, I'm pretty unprepared to be out here. I wear my puffy jacket most of the time. And that's because I'm moving. This is kind of a fall puffy jacket, but I use it all winter. And because my core is up. 
Well, think about an ice fisherman. These guys are just sitting, right? That's cold to be sitting. They're sitting in their ice hut or their little ice tent. And so they have all the gear they need to be comfortable while sitting. So if something goes south on your camping trip, you can walk over to them and you know just get a little support, a little hot chocolate, their buddy heater, sit in their clam tent and warm up a bit. They just have everything out there for you. And unlike the other things we're gonna talk about today, other outdoor destinations, people typically head home at night, right? They're kind of done, they're ready to go get supper. In ice fishing, these guys are kind of ready to go the long haul. They're there to catch as many fish as they can get. The amount of fish they need to fill that stringer. And so many times you're gonna find people out on these lakes at night. And that's another great thing because if you have an issue at night, you know you can move in towards that lake and probably find someone. Can we go through the trees? Yeah. Are you brave enough to go through the trees? Yeah. Okay, follow mama. Yeah. See that? He must be a very tiny animal. Oh yeah, huh East? You see it? So this one is a good one and it's it's kind of the common sense one. It's the one that I've always been following before I thought more about this. And that's recreational trailheads. So wherever ATVs go in the winter and hikers and backpackers, these are places that are going to have a well-trodden trail. The roads will be packed out. These folks bring with them first aid kit and survival gear. There is going to be a community there that is going to give you a bit of safety in numbers. And then many places that have trailheads also have people monitoring those trailheads. So your park rangers, your local law enforcement. And the beauty of the trailhead, I think really comes through for those who are solo camping. So just like when I go up in the mountains here and do a hike, I may leave myself or leave you a note saying, hey, I'm gone these days, expect me to be back this day. If not, please contact somebody to come looking for me. Now you don't have to be super specific to give away your campsite, but that does let people know that you're out there and if it's past the date you said you're supposed to be there, they're gonna send people to look for you or at least contact your loved ones who can give them the specific spot. And then you, as a responsible citizen, when you're done with that camping trip, you'll just go back and remove that note and everybody is good. Nobody's gonna worry about you being out there. Um, all these tips are ways to get you out here and help you be safe. Really, it's just about getting out here. The more you're out here, you'll find comfort. Uh, another way to find comfort, uh, if you check out this video, we have a video on electric blankets. That's gonna really increase your comfort out here. If you're watching this video after December 12th, we actually have a video about electric heaters and warming up the cabin of your small camper trailer. But our hope for you is that you find that campsite that gives you confidence, that gets you out here more, so you can enjoy what the season has to offer. I hope you all stay safe. We'll see you all in the next episode.